الله الرحمن الرحيم ويلكم تو اور 10 سيمينار ذس سيمستر ان ذا سنتر اوف اكسلنس ان انتليجنت انجينيرنج سيستم توداي وي هاف ا فيري انتريستينج سيمينار ويل بي ديسكت باي بروفيسور عمر باركب دكتور عمر ريسيف هيز باشلر ديجري ان الكتريكال اند كمبيوتر انجينيرنج فروم اور كورس اوف انجينيرنج هير اند هي جت هيز ام اس سي اند بي اتش دي ان كمبيوتر انجينيرنج فروم فلوريدا انستيتيوت اوف تكنولوجي Uh, USA in 1993 and 1999, respectively. He is currently the Dean of the Faculty of Computing and Information Technology in Rabat, and his main research interest is uh, in data mining and its application. Please welcome uh, the Professor. Thank you very much, Duncan. You will Zambri, Dr. Lafi, all of you are welcome. Uh, I would like to just uh, share with you uh, what I know, which is a little about big data, which is the topic of this seminar. Just from Wikipedia, what is the big data, you know? Uh, <clears throat> or what is Apache Hadoop? Because that is the topic that we are going to talk about. Apache Hadoop, it is an open source framework for distributed uh, storage and processing of large sets of data right, on a commodity hardware. When we say commodity hardware, it doesn't mean that this is very cheap, uh, like server or whatever, but with some economical cost, you can make this a reality, okay? Which enables the big entities to get better insight into this big data, because otherwise there is no way how, how you can visualize, how you can make summaries of these data, so that will help you in your decision making. So you need to get better insight from this massive amount of data. And this data is characterized by different things. This is not like the regular one. So does anyone know something or all of these? You know all of these, right. OK, these are like, uh, you know, in networking, we have the OSI model. Consists of seven layers. The TCB IB is five layers. And when you talk to, uh, when you talk to the people, uh, in, like, like in Cisco, for example, or whatever, they will ask you in which layer you are talking about. So you can change in each layer something that will add something or improve something. So basically, we will talk about uh, the core, the core uh, basis of this uh, technology, which is called Hadoop, okay? So we will run into story and we end up with an example, but later on, I think we need to make probably, or here, like research group probably, and also uh, to make small lab or whatever. And also we can make like sessions of practice, because once you practice something, you will, you will know it better. So this is like a performance issue. When you have big data and all the, the regular data which uh, use the uh, relational database systems, it is like the old car. Because you have fixed schema, you have fixed tables, and you have the data, and you get clean data from the beginning. You will not end up of getting like unknown, or you, will, you expect something really fixed, for example, the employer ID, employer name, something dab, dab, dab. But here, but when the data now is moving at a fast rate, you have now different devices, you have mobiles, you have Twitters, you have tweets, you have uh, Instagram, you have WhatsApp, you have many things. So you need something like this sportive car to, uh, in order to deal with this phenomenal thing, which is the data. So we have this big data and we have Three Vs, then four Vs, then five Vs. So what are these? These are the volume, voluminous data. You have so uh, voluminous amount of data uh, every second in the whole world. Variety. Now the data is not like just uh, text. Now it is an audio, video. Uh, you have logs. This is unstructured data because the logs sometimes big, sometimes small. You have veracity, that is, this data is not clean. 
like the with the regular uh, relational database systems. So, and they have the five V's now. The last is the value. What is the value of this data? Okay. This is translated by Dr. Uh, Adnan Al Bar. He's from the Faculty of Computing. He just uh, he's uh, the one who translated this one. Okay, from IBM. So these are the four the four V's now, which is introduced in this slide. The volume. Now you have volumes in exabytes, zettabytes, metabytes. You have big volume of data. You have variety of data. It is structured uh, or unstructured data or semi-structured data also type. Unstructured audio and video semi-structures like log files. You have velocity. You, ha you, you are running into speed now because everything is moving. You have streaming data. And veracity means no clean. And now this is the five Vs added now. This subject is in state of flux. This is like, it born like in four years, so you expect these technologies will, you know, will merge and uh, submerge, something like that. Right. So the, the, the sources of data now, different sources of data, like tweets, like WhatsApps, you have videos on YouTube. So there is a lot of things around you, and you are witnessing that through your mobile. So what is a big data? So since this uh, subject is very new, you will find me running into going to big data, this uh, term through this uh, seminar, and also about Hadoop system also, I will run into it in different ways. So what is a big data? It is a term that used to address the data in big sizes, like this sizes, whether it is structured, semi-structured, or unstructured, and this you can capture this data, you want to analyze this data, you want to share this data, you want to search in this data, you want to uh, store this data and get use of it. You need to visualize the data because in database, you, for example, you have crystal report in Oracle, whatever, you need to get reports. And also from here, big data, how you can get report to give your manager something about that. You, you need to make query about this big, big data also so you can have better services. So how to accomplish these tasks? So this need a free framework is called Hadoop. And there is something called Hadoop ecosystem. So you got to be a Hadooper. Once you learn it, so you'll be one of the Hadoopers. So the big data sources, as you know, the Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and you have sensors also that generate data, big airports, um, inventories, so you, everything now will have an ID or IP address and will generate more data. So actually you want to get better services of your business, from this business. Sensors, for example, congested roads, smart cities, defense systems, security measures, cyber crimes, internet of things, transactions online and shopping, for example, and uh, flights, for example, radars, duty. You want to improve the services, but if you know how to get uh, to manage this big data, generated by this internet of things and sensors that will generate more data. So, so we run into something called Hadoop. Hadoop, basically it is a storage and processing part. The storage part is called Hadoop distributed file system and also the processing part is called MapReduce. Right. Hadoop, what is Hadoop? Hadoop is a framework that addresses the big data issue which tells you how to uh, process this, this data in a distributed networks Okay, and you can store this data and also you can get better use of it. So Hadoop, uh, it used, uh, you know, these different technologies we run into. These different technologies, uh, now we will explain just the core part of it, which is Hadoop distributed file system and the MapReduce. Here it is written MapReduce 2. So I will tell you why it is called MapReduce 2. So you have MapReduce. In MapReduce, you will write the map and reduce functions to process the data. You can, because it is built on Java, Java, so you can use Java. But also, there is something called Hive. There is something called Big. There is something called Spark. These are the technologies. And some terminologies. Who made this, uh, uh, I mean, um, this uh, term like Hadoop? We start, this is started early 
from Google because Google and Yahoo are running into more data. So Google, they start with something called MapReduce and it become like open source, it is named by Hadoop now. And there is something called Google File System. Now it is called uh, <coughs> Hadoop Distributed File System. There is something called Big Tables. Big Tables now is called HBase. And also something for monitoring using Chubby, now it is called Zookeeper. So we start to get this elephant now to decompose this big elephant. So we have here something called Zookeeper. We have something called uh, MapReduce. We some have something uh, Hadoop. We have something called Hype, HBase. So we will start to recognize this figure now or this elephant. Like when you do research, you do something like that. This is maybe a graph, but after that it is elephant or something. Okay. The rules when the people work in big data, either Hadoop developer or administrator or analyst or tester, and there are certificates for this. And <coughs> distributors, you can download some software from uh, like Cloudera or Hortonworth and IBM. They have also classes you can be enrolled in. So you acquire the data in different formats. Video, audio, logs, so it is structured and unstructured data. So what is the difference between traditional and the, I mean, data that we are already know, know about and the big data? First, the data acquisition. There is data entry and end users here in the regular traditional one. Why the big data is uh, mobile, tweets, uh, what are other people are talking about uh, the university or your company. So everybody is tweeting. So you need to follow all of these uh, events and analyze them and get, uh, for example, uh, to recommend something for the manager. Validation. The regular data, you get to validate the data because there is no way, for, uh, there is no room for um, unclear or fake data or something like that. This is done on the fly, this acquisition of data. Now, the transformation, here in the tradition, you do summarization, you get record and summarize it. But here you have text, you have uh, numbers, you, have, you need to do different summarizations with this data. Persistence, uh, single centralized database but here distributed, called uh, polyglot. An application, this is three-tier process. That is the front-end user and the business logic and the storage. And here you have the data centers integration with these commodity servers we are saying at the beginning of the lecture. Usage here for reporting, prediction, predictive analysis, and also here you will do also predictive analysis. Right. Now, in big data, it is characterized by its real time. So here, store and forward. You are pulling the data to the storage, then you make the analysis. Where the, in real time streaming, the data will be pushed to you. When somebody tweet, it will go to some storage, then you try to make some processing on that. Right. End of day, you do the processing. End of the day processing, probably with the traditional historical one. This is even best trigger as it happened in the on the fly also this is uh, you need complete record here live records with updates maybe some updates there here you have to get the full data here you have the delta what is changed you can just record it because it is very huge data also there is no loss of data this is should be guaranteed in the regular historical databases and here both there is a possible loss for everything also Detailed analytics, and here snapshot immediate analytics because you are doing things on the fly. Also, the model building uh, is for pred prediction, like data mining or machine learning. Also here, you are doing also prediction. So again, we are saying we are repeating these terminologies. Big data, data it is beyond the storage, and the, 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 the current data is beyond the storage capacity and also beyond the processing uh, of the regular machines. So there are two questions, how to store this voluminous data and how to process this data. That is why we are going to talk about the two core parts in the diagram at the beginning. So the idea is just divide and conquer, divide and conquer the problem that you split this data and 
make different jobs and run them in parallel so they are independent. Then you collect the results and make your uh, summary or uh, whatever you are looking for. So the big data provides scalability that is linear. It means as much as you need of these uh, nodes or servers, you can scale horizontally, linearly. And also, for example, you have a cluster of 4,000 servers, but you need maybe 64. But if you need more, well, you can expand. You can shrink, something like that. So also, you can intelli use intelligent software like machine learning, if you need. Because this is like the OSI model. In, for example, in a switch or a, in a router, sometimes you have different layers, but other, la other layers you don't need. You have the machine learning, you have natural language processing, because sometimes you want, to the people, you want to know the people and report something online. So you need natural language processing. And the data, it is different data, but it is huge and uh, voluminous data. Like, Father. Built in the yes. No, because this uh, this is free. It is not owned by anyone, and uh, you need uh, to find. You need to use the tool that you want. For example, here, Mahout, that is machine learning, machine learning. So that module you can use it if your application need that. Because like use R or Python, or you can do, but it will, it will not work. You got to use this technology. Whatever you need, then uh, I think we need another seminar to make uh, use cases and see how to integrate this to make some uh, solution for this. Okay. So like Moore's law, it says like every 18 months, uh, the integration of transistors uh, uh, double while the cost decrease. And also here, you have commodity servers, you have clusters of 4,000 servers, I think then uh, it's like Moore's law, something like that. So, okay. so you d basically divide and conquer. You divide the problem and just resolve it. So the big data is characterized by it's timely, in time, it is online, accessibility. You can access different ways uh, to provide the data. And holistic, because it includes lots of data from mobiles, from social networks, from uh, customer relational management, also a, a big company or um, a giant entity, they, are, they want to serve their uh, customers worldwide. So they need to find strategies and to build their strategies ba based on this huge amount of online data. So they need to get the analysis of such data. Okay. So this is cost effective, and you can argument, the, as Dr. Abdullah said, uh, Dr. Ahmed, you can augment the, the, the tools that you want, so it can uh, solve the problem that you are uh, trying to do. For now, the storage, data storage increased by time, because this is big data, and access speed. If you look to the disk, when you read the data, if you have one terabyte, and the speed of reading is 100 megabit per second, you need two and a half hours just to read this data. So this is this is bad issue. So. You need to reduce the time if you could divide the data. And you can write, uh, read it like for 1 over 100 of the, if you have 100 drives, and if you divide the data, the speed will, uh, I mean, the, the time required would be very less in this case, because you are working in parallel, and you reduce the time drastically. And here, as if you are assuming that the data is already there, yeah. and we have to yeah, mine this big data. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it could be done that it could be done live as the data is. Yes, you can. Is you can. Uh, we will run into this uh, answer by the end of the seminar. Uh, we are you doing like batch because this big big data is pushed to you. You batch. It is like batch uh, batch. Then you process it. But also there are ways you can uh, analyze the online data. We will run into this also. Right. So you need to provide scalability and fault tolerance. Fault tolerance, you can provide it by replication. And you will know what, is this mean, what does that, that mean. Uh, and also, uh, once you get the result, because you, the result now is collected from many, many servers. So you need to collect them in one record or one report. And also, 
you, so you need to, to use now the core part, which is called MapReduce. It is a programming model, okay? It is powerful, and uh, either you can do brute, for, brute force uh, query, or using structured query language, or you can do batch query, right? But this is unclear right now. This is not clear, okay? Right. Now, you have high performance computing, and also you have grid, grid computing. In high performance computing, you <clears throat> distribute the work across the clusters of machine using a shared uh, file system called storage area network. Then you do the processing, okay? So you move the data to the code. While here in the grid computing, working for large scale data processing, so you use uh, application uh, ABI, uh, application programming interface, such as message passing interface, okay? And here, we will find that you don't need to read the data because we, we saw from the example two and a half hours just to read that much of data with that much of speed. But it, there is another idea. Why don't you do the reverse, move the code to the data? Because the code, amount of code is less, but the amount of data is big. So if you move the code to the data, I think you will do better progress. Hey, Hadoop. Uh, Hadoop is an open, uh, open source software for distributing processing of large data sets using clusters of computer, uh, computers and using simple programming models. Type. Distribute, uh, distribute. There are two, uh, uh, two main parts in Hadoop, we, and we later we call it Hadoop ecosystem. There is a storage part, which is the Hadoop distributed file system, and the processing part, we call it MapReduced. Later on, this map reduced will turn into uh, what? It will turn into something called YARN, yet another resource uh, negotiator. That is, we call it Hadoop uh, or HDF uh, or map reduced 2 version. The new version is map reduced 2. Okay. Right. Hadoop history. Now, there are three main papers in this uh, subject, key papers, okay, now. In 2000, 2000 actually, Google, w they are working in the same area. Uh, they want to see uh, this data and how they, they manage it and how they get use of it and analyze it. And Yahoo also, Yahoo people are also, you know, if you work in uh, maybe device design, and in another universe, somebody is working in the device design, they have the, sh the same ideas. But after a while, they will have uh, something near, their ideas will be near to, to each other somehow. So Google, they produced this paper called Google File System. This is the Google File System paper in 2003. And then they have the idea of MapReduce. You have processing layer and storage uh, layer, okay, uh, using cluster. This is in 2004, that is called MapReduce. You can see it is Google. This is Google. This is Google, and this is Google. Those people are working in Google, okay? Now, it is like a, a technique for simple processing of large amount of data. Yahoo, dog cutting, he's working in Yahoo, and he has his son, he has this small game or elephant, so he called, he said, what is this, uh, your uh, game name? He said Hadoop, he called it Hadoop. So now the name come Hadoop. So it is uh, consisting of uh, Hadoop distributed file system and MapReduce, that is the processing layer. So these are the three key papers online. Right. Hadoop key features, what is Hadoop key features? It is distributed, means you are using clusters, scalable, you can augment any tool. As Dr. Ahmed, he said, I want machine learning, well, there is machine learning, you can use. Right. You can use Weka in the regular one, but here you can use Mahout. And also it is fault tolerance by adding replications for the data, and it is open source. And it is called Apache Hadoop by, by Yahoo. Okay. Ha now we have the Hadoop ecosystem, which is the diagram at the beginning. It consists of Apache, uh, HBase for database, Hive, there is something called Big, there is something called uh, Uzi, Spark, Zookeeper, Avro, uh, Apache, Slurp. So these are all these technologies that can be used, and you can find them here. Uh, Ambari, there is a 
interface for the tools is called Ambari and so on. Right. Hadoop distributed file system, it works in this commodity hardware for storing and processing large amount of data. Right. The file system here, it is a method methods and data structures that the operating system uses to keep track of files on the disk because they are now in partitions, big data. So we need to get really manage this data very well undistributed and highly fault tolerance okay and here uh, <clears throat> the minimum block size once you store the data in the server or these we call them cluster nodes uh, or data nodes the minimum is uh, 64 megabyte but you can expand to 128 megabyte and here companies like Sears, Yahoo, big uh, companies are using these uh, tools and you will find, you will find, look, you will find these tools available in the tools here. You will find Hive, you will find Zookeeper, you will find uh, uh, MapReduce, you will find Yarn, you, dab, 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 you will find all of these there. So, is Cloudera a company? Or? Cloudera, it is a company that provide you with the tools like this is virtual machine you can use to do the job because you don't own the big cluster or real is that cluster an operating system for its own? yeah it is virtual machine yeah like you can put like centos linux or whatever and you can run it and now uh, hadoop provide five services we call them uh, from the beginning the, the upper two that we call them the master nodes or master services and here the slave nodes here we have the name node, which keep the metadata. What is metadata? What is metadata? Description of the data. It is data about data. For example, suppose I have three rooms and I have 1,000 books. I put them in the first room. Then uh, somebody get, bring me 1,000 books in the another room, another 1,000 books in the third room. Now, if you ask me, find me the book, it is a nightmare for me. And maybe I will end up that I will say I didn't find it. But from the beginning, once I got this 1,000 book, I have a list, like from Dr. Ghassan, he gave me a list of the name of the books. So this is a description about the books. Again, the same room, the third room, the same, I have a list of the books. Now, when you come and ask me, where is that book? I can find the list and I will say, okay, it is in room two. So this is data about data. This is, we call it metadata. So it runs basically based on this concept of having something called uh, metadata, data about data. So. The, the system or Hadoop ecosystem will know where is the data spread and scattered among all these servers. And we have something called so secondary. It is like an index. It is yeah. like an indexing, sahih. And also, <clears throat> uh, we have secondary name that will help the, the original one. And we have something called job tracker. We have data node, which will uh, keep and uh, we can deploy uh, the, the, the data or put the data in this data node for read and write processes and you have something called task tracker here the name node can talk to the data node data node and also these three the slaves can talk to each others and also the job tracker will assign the job to the task tracker and Hadoop distributed file system consists of something called client like software used as a client because you want to initiate a job or a task to the system and there is a job tracker and the job tracker will talk to the job tracker will talk to the task tracker so the job tracker will talk to many task trackers on different nodes right. the client it is an application known as the hadoop uh, distributed file client okay and it interact with the name node this is the name node so the client will interact with the name node interact with the name node and also with the data node. So the client, oops, the client will talk to the name node and to the data node. This is the client software. And also interact with the job tracker and task tracker. Will interact with the job tracker and task tracker. The client will talk to the job tracker, but implicitly the job tracker will talk to the task tracker. So here we have the Hadoop distributed file system components. We have the client, for example, it wants to uh, get some read or some write, so it will provide something called the metadata. But this metadata is not clear also here. It is not clear yet. 
and uh, we have this metadata served, uh, I mean saved or like indexing by the name node. And we, are, we have the racks, we have data nodes, and we have blocks of data of 64 or 128. So here, <laughs> fault tolerance, now to provide to fault tolerance, for, once you distribute the job, some servers might go down. That is a big probability. So how to keep track and get the job running? Even some uh, nodes are uh, like dead, get dead, for example. So through replication, the minimum replication is three. For example, if you have the block size is like, we will have some example here, probably. Uh, if you have uh, like 100 megabyte, for example, uh, of data, the replication is means 300. So you will put 100 here based on certain criteria and another server 100, one, so you replicate the data just in case. So you replicate the data or the, you replicate the, the processing? The, the data, the blocks of data, yes. Because you need fault tolerance and because if some part of the data is lost, maybe the whole process will run into... Why do you worry about this? Be because uh, RAID systems in your story systems. No, no, no. This is this is ecosystem different from the RAID and the, what is happening in the hard disk. In the hard disk, once you write in a block of data or a sector, you will lose the other part. Then you will run into segmentation and defragmentation by the end in your PC or laptop or whatever. But here, this is different. Uh, since you have commodity servers, you can distribute the blocks of data, but there is no harm because you have plenty of storage now. And the, the, you get fault tolerance, so there is no need for RAID or something like that. Again, is, is, is the problem that data may get lost or is that yeah. you lose connectivity to some of the servers? It, loss of connectivity means loss of data. So it means one, 10 servers are dead in the cluster. So you are in safe side because these blocks are already somewhere and you, the name node has the metadata about them. For example, if node one crashes, but there is another replication of this data or block of data in node 5 and in node 100, something like that. So here, <coughs> uh, we can see here, the client distribute the job to the uh, data node. You have these files, file 1, 2, 3. So you distribute them and also you replicate them, but the replication is not shown here. And now, now this is the metadata. The, na the name node will keep this metadata file one, file two, file three, file four. File one is in, on the data node one, three, four. This is one, two, three, something you can imagine like that. So we know where are these blocks of data or files are stored, blocks of data. But so uh, Steve, don't you have the case where the file is so big that it is itself divided among several nodes? The files, this, techni this technology based on dividing the file itself into blocks. The minimum of 64 megabyte. Yeah, but these blocks are redundant. You can make them redundant. You replicate them. Yes, that is true. For example, file one, you put it in machine one and machine three and machine four, and all of them. And you have this metadata, the client will send it to the name node. So we'll keep track of them. Suppose now uh, node one crashes, so it will re erase or delete that metadata that node one is no longer working, and replace it, for example, by uh, node five, for example. So the metadata will be changed now, okay? So, and these, now, these nodes which, uh, have the data will send already something called heartbeat. What is heartbeat? To say, well, hello, I am alive, I am in this node. So the name node will know. The name node does not store the data, but it stores the metadata about the data stored somewhere, now you know. Now, so the concept of Hadoop, the high performance computing is just to move the data to the uh, SAN storage area network, while here in the in Hadoop case, you will move the code to the data. So this is called fetching data to code, fetching data to code, and here sending data to code. You may say, okay, why it is not sending code to data? Probably because they want the, the code word to be at the end or so. So you move the code to the data, and now this is the concept of Hadoop. You move a little bit of code to the data and process it, so you will have lo low latency, and it's very easy to move the, co the code rather than to do the reverse. <coughs> Moving big data to the code, that is something 
uh, is not so best. You have your code on multi cores. Yes, now we and now we'll see. Read, but that of course, it will be faster than the. Yes, code. this is the main idea. Now we have here the two layers we are saying, talking about the Hadoop distributed file system, and also we have the MapReduce. This is the processing layer. The processing layer consists of the job tracker and task tracker. The job tracker will assign the task to the, the task tracker so they can run in parallel. And also here in the Hadoop distributed file system, here we are storing the physical data. So we have the name node. It will, uh, uh, have, it will have the, uh, we call it what, metadata. And we have the data node. These are the master. Here, these are the slave nodes. So in MapReduce, MapReduce is based on Java. So you can write the map function in Java, and you can write the reduce function in Java. But sometimes uh, you may not like to do Java exception handling, dab, dab, dab. So what you do? Well, you will go to uh, you, you write the map and reduce functions in Java. But sometimes you may be afraid of lacking of some code or it will take time. So actually, why you are writing the map reduce? Because you want to process the data. It's like querying the data and you get the report. So in, in this case, you use something called Hive. So in one of these papers, you will find maybe like 65 lines of code of Java, but you can write it in two lines in Hive as a query, structured query language. So actually, this will take care of translating this query into Java. And it's like, you know, like uh, in the web. You can, if you write in HTML, you will run into bankruptcy and you will hate it. You will not manage the web page. But if you use another, other tools, it will do the job for you, but it will hide more complexities uh, away from you. So that will give good start to you once you do this job. So <clears throat> Hadoop can run uh, the MapReduce. You can use various languages, either Java, Python, Ruby, Ruby, and this provide parallelism and convert our query into MapReduce jobs that will run on these cluster machines. And also, the MapReduce process the data based on something called key value. For example, suppose you have data, you have line number one, number two, number three, number four, and you have some words, say, for example. Some words, we, we will see now. So you will, you will, you will the map, uh, there are two phases called the map phase and reduce phase. The map phase will convert the data into the key value pairs and the reduce phase will con convert the data, the, the results, or the, will reduce these results into a key value, but it is unclear until now, okay? So you have to write as a programmer, the map function and the reduce function as at the beginning, like electronics. You start with the capacitor, resistor, dab, 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 then uh, use integrated circuit probably later on. It do, does the job for you. Right. The map phase, there is in the map, uh, the map reduced phases are three phases. The map phase, the shuffle and sort phase, and also uh, the reduced phase. In the shuffle, we are merging, combining the outputs from different nodes, and then <clears throat> we sort them based on the key. And we partition them based on the key value, but this is unclear now. We will give numerical example now, so it can be clear. And also, we we'll get the reduce phase. Now, you have the map phase, the shuffle and sort phase, and the reduce phase. So, basically, you split the data into chunks of small data called uh, splits, and you process them by the map jobs, and you get the results. How? So, you get the data as a key value, then you introduce it to the map reduce, then you will get the results as the key value pairs. Then you have to reduce this by collecting all the data and shuffling and sort it, eh? sort it and just get the result, final result. For example here, suppose I have these input files, A, B, C, D, A, C, C, D, A. So you have to do the split. You have to do the split first. Yes, you split this data. Now this is ABC. It is ABC, but it is like split it. A just alone, B alone, C alone. Same for the second line or same for the third line. So we have the split. Now, you have the map phase. You have the, the map phase. We said what? 
the, have the map phase and shuffle and sort and you have the re reduced phase. So here you can see all of these phases. The, we split the data now, we create something called a uh, uh, list of, of key values. For example, here A appears once, B is like making a count, something like count. B, one of B, B of B, one B of C, the same as here. We have, I have one B of D, one B of A, one B of C, and the same as here. Now, what you will do, you will do the shuffle but based on the uh, having key value. So here, you'll find A1 appears here once, and here once, and here once, while B1 only appears here once, and here you'll find C appears here, and there, and here, while D uh, is appears once there. Now, it is the stage where you collect, reduce these results. So you'll find here, A1 appears three times, while B appears one time, and uh, C appears three times. Now you get the results. You, so this is like something, uh, you are like word count. For example, you have big data, like a file consisting of one million records for movies. Like for example, uh, Netflix or some, those people using Netflix, they read this, uh, give their opinion and read this uh, data. So there are files for big data and for data mining and for machine learning. You go to University of California, Irvine, UCI, you'll find more data there. Standard data, you can use it for medicine, medical uh, purposes, for business, for uh, something like this. You will find some data like word count. Uh, 1,000 uh, customers, they rated like 1,000 movie. And you'll find more, more data. And how to this? That can be best uh, exemplified by MapReduce. You can see this job, how, it, uh, how you write the functions for map and reduce, and you, you will run, this is a smaller, a small scale example, but you can run it on that one million record example very easily. You can use laptop and virtual machine. Right. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope this uh, makes the idea clear. Yes. Can I have a question? Yeah. No, no, we did not start the questions, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much yeah, for this uh, very interesting seminar. A lot of ideas that uh, are uh, new, at least new to me, and uh, so thank you very much. Yeah. Now we'll open the floor for questions, and uh, we, as usual, students are given the first uh, priority for questions. Any questions from our <coughs> students? Then, Salman, it's your, uh, it's your turn, please. Uh, can you go to your last slide, please? Okay. Last slide. Last slide. Last slide. Last slide. Yeah. Yes. In this, uh, uh, you shown the input. The input is also ABC and the split is also ABC. So yes. what's the difference, Yanni? Uh, can you please explain? For example, suppose you have this line. This is line number one. This is line number two. This is line number three. Line number one include a word like uh, Omar, Abed, your good name? Salman. Salman. Something like that. So like in, a, uh, they are like, they are not split. Basically, you will split them. You will put, probably, you might put this in, uh, this is, uh, you recognize this is one piece, and this is one piece, this is one piece. Once you get the data here in the file, you don't know what it is. But through the program, you can split these into pieces. Okay, uh, then when you split it, uh, you see the D is, uh, uh, has occurred like two times. And it says D is uh, occurred at one time. The D? Yeah. D is in the second line and also third line. The D appears to twice, twice. but this is a uh, this is a this is a mistake. Yes. Okay, this is a mistake. Yes. So, uh, in, so finally, what you store is that like Omar at uh, has occurred three times. Yes. In yes. which file? This is called sent, like sentiment analysis in data mining. Okay. You are dealing actually with text and uh, word count. Okay, Yanni, uh, yes. uh, at here it, it only mentioned that A has appeared three times, but it yes. does not mention that in which file. No, because at the end you want that. You want this that. is the end result. Okay. Yeah. So this is just an example of using MapReduce. But uh, you can use it in business, you can use it in airports uh, or whatever. Because once you have like big airports, with big entities, big library, you want to make good services and you need, you need to use some technologies that will help you to process. Like uh, Amazon, for example, uh, 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 the previous, not Trump, the other guy, what is his name? Bush, no? no, the before him. 
Obama, he used uh, big data to analyze these uh, political, uh, I mean, uh, parties and their opinions through this kind of business. So they hired the people to analyze so they can make strategies for their uh, campaigns. Yes. Any, any, any other questions? Otherwise, I Okay, please go. Yeah. We have a question as well. Thank you, Dr. Omar, for the uh, fruitful uh, seminar. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Omar is very famous on uh, HPC also and networking. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the impact of the Adobe uh, technology or software on uh, uh, storage facilities? On storage facilities? Or acceleration of speed or in, Again, in the, the performance? Question? Again, the question. What's the impact of uh, Hadoop software? Hadoop. Yeah. Okay. On yes. the uh, storage facilities. Yes. This is yeah. like exactly when you have the hard disk. Either you make it a static configuration. Once you have the SQL and you have the data, you, it is filled, you run into danger and the hard disk might break. Like in the laptop. Sometimes you find the thread, the hard disk, because it is filled with data. Either you have to delete, especially the C, or it will crash. Okay, mm -hmm. but here you have the commodity servers. You can expand as much as you want. Maybe you have some. You are running a business, and that required probably a cluster of like 2,000 servers. It means you have 2,000 storage areas within these servers. But later on, in another application, you might have uh, you, you run into a need for 4,000 clusters, uh, 4,000 servers. So it means you are expanding linearly the storage through uh, uh, storing these blocks and replications in all of these. And Thank you do the same business and then you collect the result through these software tools. But you got to use these software tools exactly. And it is in a state of flux, probably you will find some, or every time you will find something new. Is it open source? Uh, it is open source and free, yes. And the working on Linux and every... Yeah, platform. on Linux, but you got to use this virtual machine. Okay, yes. VM. Either you use like a virtual box from Oracle virtual box or the virtual machine. You can use it. Thank you, Dr. Oracle. VMware. VMware, yes. You can install Clouderia in, in Clouderia. Clouderia in laptop. In laptop. Yes. As a new. Yeah. New and you system. can use Quick Start because that will make life easy for you. Okay. But, but you, you can do different things, actually. But, for example, if you use the virtual machine sometimes, when you move the mouse in the laptop or desktop, it is very heavy if your memory is very uh, less. And also, you need to use Booty because you need the secure uh, SSH, secure the shell. Yeah. Booty, so you need to create public key and private key, and you have yeah. to give this virtual machine then you get access, because otherwise, every uh, time you press like Alt Shift, mm -hmm. just to move the mouse and run the Linux code. So you need to know about Linux. That is something good. Also, the knowledge of Java, Python also, that would be good. So you can start from here, and then you can build on, inshallah. And probably, may, maybe we can make practical decision one day. So you will feel with this business how it, it is worked. For example, you may run like classification in data mining or uh, clustering. Uh, that is in, in, in one machine, why, for, for example, Weka, R, Python, whatever. But also, you can run it also in parallel on these machines. Yes. Okay, more questions. I have, I have a few, few questions and yes. I just put all of them. Yes. Okay. Basically, I mean, with time, data is getting, we are exploding. Yes. I mean, it's a huge amount of data. Yes. And uh, what is the limit? First of all, and uh, what's the limit? The limit that we can store, and this brings the other issue also. Data, a lot of data is redundant. I will give an example. There is some event, yeah. and 100 people are uh, uh, videotaping this and lifting that to the net. Yeah. I mean, the angles are different. They, they look different, yes. but it's the same thing. Yes. So it's a redundant amount, a redundant data. Yes. And uh, okay, so. What you do, actually, I have seen this, what you call uh, model uh, map reduce. Yes. Uh, does it do this thing? Because anyway. Yes. Be because now big data means either on the fly mm -hmm. or you are pushing some uh, de devices, pushing this data through the sensor Internet of Things to uh, some uh, storage. Then you get this batch and process it. So you can 
There are tools to process the data online, streaming, we call it like Spark. You can use something for uh, getting this data online, like uh, something called Flume, something called like um, Scoop. We have Scoop and Flume. While you, there is something for events driven by mobile. Uh, so another tool, another tool called uh, Storm that will get like, like something like SMS or some events by mobile. And here you can see those tweets, people, and you see how, like Amazon or whatever, how much they sell per second, how much. So they generate a lot, of, a lot of data, and they want to serve you as a customer. So they need uh, these kind of tools, like uh, Amazon.com, to better provide service for the customers. And the limit, actually, we are running into uh, more and more. So we can say, uh, phys physically, there is a limit, but logically, there is no limit because data now is generated from everywhere. For example, even from your refrigerator, you might get a message, please bring uh, uh, yogurt, please bring some water. We are running off. So there are much data now from these devices going to. I mean, the limit in storage because. Uh, the storage is I mean, linear. You, yeah, you, you can add. Linear. After a while, it yeah. will explode. And then. It is like dynamic hard yeah. disk. Mm. If you need, there are, there are but more. You, you can maybe forget about all data as well. The old data? Yeah, I mean, just if, I mean, like the normal thing, the data yeah. and with time, I think, uh, I don't think it goes linear. Exponentially. It goes exponential, actually, yes. yeah. because a lot of people, they have mobiles, a lot of people yeah. are using modern technology, yeah. internet the, of things. Yeah. You mentioned the refrigerator yes. and these things. Yeah. Once, uh, once you do streaming analysis, mm -hmm. you sometimes you don't need even, you just analyze the things and just get out okay. of it. So basically what you're saying is that yeah. it's on the fly. We on do the fly. Analysis. You can do uh, on the fly and also you can do uh, push data to you, yeah. collect it and later on, because it is, it is better to do it in oh, batch. But this data, okay, so basically this data is already stored. This data already stored. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, my... yes, probably you store this much of data in the cluster. Mm -hmm. It is based on how much your cluster can accommodate. Yeah, what, what yes. I mean is the following, maybe I misunderstood yeah. this. Uh, your use of data is maybe different from mine. It is true. So the way you analyze your data is different from the way I do it. Yes. So how do you do with the storage then this way? I mean, the you store it in the Hadoop distributed mm -hmm. file system. So we, uh, and this is like dynamic. Data. It's like raw data. This is raw data, huh? and you can expand as many servers you, as you have. As it you can. As you as can, you can uh, sorry, because uh, it is dynamic. How much do you need? It will be allocated to you. Once you are done, you get rid out of that. You get another business, you need more, you can get, so it is linearly uh, expandable. Yeah. Okay, any, any more uh, questions? Okay. Do you like this subject? How many do you like this subject? Like Just raise your hand. So I think everyone likes this subject. Like what to, I need also to listen to comments from you. Yeah, I'm not in the field, but just a question comes to my mind after a few comments. Uh, which is the most challenging? Is the clustering data, uh, saving data itself, or importing that data? Well, there is no, uh, there is uh, none, none of this because this is uh, just there to resolve this issue in terms of data, in terms of processing, fast processing. Yes. Uh, any comments about IPSS data clustering file system? About what? IPSS. IB. I file system, which just recently came out, the IPFS, interplanetary file system, IPFS. I am not, I'm not aware of this. So some data on the moon. Yeah, on the moon. I don't know. No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's just recently came out. That's why I was asking. I told you, this is in a state of flux, and some uh, technologies emerge and some merge others, and this is one of the new things just I came to know from you. But I will research it, inshallah, I will see it. Thank you very much. Thank you for all.